Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at some of the Windows tools you must have and use on Windows. Now, Power Toys has been around for a while, but Microsoft have released a bunch of new tools and I wanted to cover them in this video. So just hit the latest here and then click on Power Toys uh, Setup. And this is going to be the V0.64.1. This is the very latest version. If you've already got it installed, you can click on Install Now for the latest updates of that version of Power Toys from Microsoft. Now, before we jump right in and show you all of the latest applications, I just want to have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Cells. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, then you can check out CD Key Cells links in the video description. Create an account and click on what you want to purchase and click buy now. Use my promo code capital B capital R09. Apply this to your order and you should get a 35% discount in the month of November. Now, once you've got your key, you can then activate your version of Windows by applying this to the activation center. Anyway, back to the video. All we need to do here now is open up our brand new version of Power Toys and you should get some highlights, known issues, and some added applications that they've added to uh, the Power Toys tool. So let's take a look at the first one called File Locksmith. Now this wasn't ready last time and I was showing you basically just an image of what it's going to look like, but it is actually ready for use now and you can take a look at it right here. I've got it enabled by turning it on here. Now let's just see what it does. So basically you right click on something and you go to delete it and it says this action cannot be completed because the folder is open. And you can basically uh, find a file that is being used by the system or by something else. And you can actually right click on this item now if you wanted to remove it. And you can come down to what's using this uh, file. This will then open up the file locksmith. And you can see here it's scanning to see what is using this actual uh, folder and this file inside here. And it will tell you what it is. And you can see it is winword.exe, which is Microsoft Word. Now, of course, that's because I've opened up the application. But if you don't know what it is that's using this, this is a great way to find out what process ID is, what uh, user account is being used for it, and what the file path is. And you can then track it down and remove it from your computer. It also has some other things here, uh, like restart as administrator. And you can end the task as well for this one, and it will then allow you to just go ahead and delete the file. Very simple and easy to do. That is the file locksmith. Very useful to have. Now let's take a look at some other ones which are new, always on top. Now this is an awesome addition uh, to the Power Toys. Basically the way this works is if you have an application that you always want on top, you can use the Windows Control T, and this will open up and activate the always on top. Let me show you how it works. So basically all I need to do here is hit Windows Control T and you will get this blue uh, outline around the one that you want to always have on top. Now, no matter what I open, this will always stay on top. This is very useful for applications and games, especially games, because when you're playing a game, what happens is if you need to close a process down or something like that, it's always buried behind the actual game and you can't get to it. Whereas this means it's always going to be on top. And this will allow you to just close things down very quick and easy. So you can see, even though I've opened up uh, Photoshop here, it went behind my always on top selection. And no matter what you make always on top, this will be the one that will be on top. And everything else will be behind that um, actual application or selection. Very, very simple, but very useful always on top and uh, this is the command here now color picker is the windows shift c and what this does is it allows you to basically find colors of an image or something like that say you like a particular color and you want to implement that on your uh, creations or work or something like that you can use color picker and you can just hover over an image and you can get the actual code for that color and this will allow you to use that code so you can get the exact color that you want. Maybe you've seen an image for some RGB on someone's video and you want to get that exact color code. Or maybe you want to highlight something for your decorating for your room. You can get the color code and take that to the shop and they will be able to color match 
that exact color. You can open it up here and it will give you the hex, RGB and HSL. And again, it gives you a color little palette here, which is very useful. Next, Awake, this does exactly what it says on the tin. It will keep the screen on and it will also keep the computer awake. It won't allow it to shut down. You've got some options here, as you can see, keep awake indefinitely. And you can also have this keep awake temporary, or you can set a timer for hours and minutes for how long you want to keep it awake. So very, very useful little feature. Now with these rocker buttons here, you can toggle this on or off at any given time. So when you don't want to use it anymore, you could just toggle it off. You can see it's enabled at the moment, but if you want to toggle it off, you could just turn it off. Next, we got the text extractor. Now this is a tool that you can use to extract text from images. So if you've seen some sort of text uh, what, that you want to copy, you can actually highlight it and copy it to Notepad or something like that. So let me just show you how this works. You just need to highlight the area. Now in testing this, it has been a bit hit and miss. Some of them have been really good uh, copies and some of them have been a little bit like this. So I wanted to show you this just in case you try it and it doesn't work very well. So it works well for certain uh, images depending on how fussy they are and how technical they are. If it's clean like this Nevada, it should work perfectly fine. But if there's any sort of letters near it, it can sort of interfere and cause a bit of an issue. Something like this will be perfectly fine. If it's on a white background, like a text document, it will be able to copy that text like for like and have no problems whatsoever. But you can see here when there's a clear background, it works really, really well. So that is the text extractor, quite a useful little tool. And uh, we're going to now move on to another new tool or new addition to Power Toys which is the host file editor. Now, if you've ever edited your host file, you would normally do this in Notepad and it can be a bit tricky. So if you run this program as administrator here, uh, just make sure you're running it as administrator like this. You can then go down to the host file editor and basically launch this and it will allow you to launch the host file editor application, which will allow you to edit your host file a lot easier. Now you can see you get a warning here and uh, you basically get a new entry if you want to add a new entry and you can edit some of the other ones here. You can toggle these on or off and you can click here and put the address in. So this will be the IP address and you can put the hosts inside here and a comment to let you know exactly what it is. And you can have it active or deactivate it and add this to the list. Very, very simple and easy to use. I'm not going to do one because I don't have anything that I want to add in here, but basically it was pretty self-explanatory. If you've used the host file editor before or edited the host file, you'll know exactly what this tool does. Once you've got them listed up here, uh, you can see them listed. You can see the additional lines you can add in here. If you need to add more in, you can add additional lines for address, host and comment. We've also got some other areas up top like host, open the host file and we've got the settings pane here and some other things. So that is the host file editor. If you use the host file quite a bit, then that tool can be quite useful. Let's take a look at the uh, mouse utilities here. And uh, if you want to look at the mouse utilities, I'll put this on shake mouse and you can see here, shake minimum distance. This will highlight whatever you want to do. So when you want to shake the mouse, it will highlight something like this. So maybe you're recording something or you want to just highlight something. You just shake the mouse. and It'll come on just like so uh, with this um, light. You can change the size of it and things like that if you wish. Also, we've got the um, enable mouse highlighter. Again, if you want to enable the mouse highlighter, this is going to put a little tiny circle around your uh, cursor. So all you need to do is use the Windows Shift H uh, key to activate it. And then once you do this, you can change the colors the primary button and also for the secondary button you can change the opacity and things like that and all you need to do is just use the shortcut here to enable it and you've got the radius and the fade delay and all that sort of stuff on there as well you can set this up exactly how you like it let me just quickly show you what it looks like right here so when i click the mouse button it's going to give us this yellow circle if you want to change that you can do to whatever color you like but that's how that works. And we've got the right click mouse one as well. So enable mouse pointers crosshair. This is for Windows Alt P and this will uh, enable a big enable mouse crosshair. I'm not sure what you would use this for, 
but you can see here it's a massive big crosshair and uh, it will just basically give you a big massive crosshair on your screen i'm not really sure what you could actually use this for i'm not sure if this would work in a game even and if you wanted to do some sort of sniping i really don't know uh, what that would be used for uh, but you could change the color to it as well and the size and the opacity and all that sort of stuff if you really want to do i've seen this added into monitors as well uh, for like crosshairs when people like to snipe i've never really used them but i'm pretty sure there's someone out there that can let me know in the comments section below what you would use this for um so yeah that is the uh, mouse utilities tool quite a few utilities there whether they'll be useful to you i really don't know i'm pretty sure someone out there will use them for something but again you can see the thickness has been changed and the color and you can also disable and enable these by just toggling them on or off very simple screen ruler same sort of thing really you can enable this by using the windows shift and m and this will give you the screen ruler now this can be quite useful for getting sizes for certain things that you may be uh, working on so for instance if you like the size of maybe an image or a little tiny thumbnail or something like that and you want to get the exact size for it you can actually just hover this over with the um, measure here and put a square around it and it will tell you exactly what size that would be uh, and you can see here that when you just hover it around or something with a square it gives you the exact measurement you've also got some other options up the top the plus and you've also got a vertical line and horizontal line which will give you measurements like that as well so if you're trying to find measurements of something, it's quite useful. I would not probably use this myself, um, but I'm pretty sure there's someone out there that will use this on a daily basis. I'm not sure what for. I'm pretty sure if someone does use it, let me know in the comments section below. I'll be happy to read your comments. Now, there is a few more like video conference mute, uh, which is uh, another application they've added. And there's a bunch of other ones which were there before, like Fancy Zones which is very useful. I'm not going to cover that because I've done that before. But yeah, Fancy Zones is pretty useful. And uh, But the video conference mute, really, you can see here, mute camera and microphone. And also you can just use these shortcuts, which is your Windows Shift Q, Windows Shift A, and Windows Shift O. This will mute the camera, mute the microphone, and so on. And then we've also got these ones here. So these are the ones uh, that have been added two power toys i'm pretty sure they're going to be adding some more let me know in the comments section below whether you would use any of these applications yourself i'll be interested to read your comments anyway that's going to be about it for this video my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to all my youtube members who join my youtube members group i really do appreciate the support also just want to give a special shout out to david lees walid rtx Brody, edward kelly albert hewson celtic lad pc repair tech vitality Bill's Computer Repair, Big Daddy, Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, and Welsh Tony. Really do appreciate the support, guys. I shall see you on the Discord server, or I'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.